hello, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle, and I'm continuing a series on foreign currency exposure and foreign currency hedging using the same example as yesterday. And yesterday we looked at the unhedged foreign currency exposure using this example of a bank based in the United States where the liabilities were 200 million denominated entirely in US dollars. So these could be demand deposits or CDs, but the idea is that the source of funds, the interest bearing liabilities for the bank, are denominated in this case entirely in US dollars, where the expected cost or cost of funds is 8%. And then we looked at this scenario here, which is the unhedged foreign currency exposure due to the bank and what did we find? We found that unhedged foreign currency exposure directly impacts returns and can cut both ways. Can, can increase the returns or can decrease the returns. So unhedged foreign currency is a source of risk. And under this scenario, the bank taking the 200 million in sources of funds takes 50% and invested in US dollar denominated loans with an expected return of 9%. And here's the unhedged foreign currency exposure. The other 100 million is invested in British loans and their expected return at, their, at the foreign rate is 15%. And we saw that this is okay if the spot currency exchange rate is stable over the period. So here we have on the left hand column the start of the period, on the right hand column we have the end of the period. And I'm following the Anthony Sanders example to a T, by the way. And so in this example the start the current the spot currency exchange rate the start of the period is 1.6 US dollars per pound sterling and it's maintained. At the end of the period it's also 1.6 US dollars per pound sterling. Under that scenario, the here's again the asset side or the investment side. In that scenario, the 100 US dollars grows by 9% as expected, and the British loan grows by 15% at the British rate. And so we end up, since we're half and half, with a blended return on investment, return on assets, I'm sorry, of 12% the midpoint. Since 8% is the cost of funds, there is a 4% difference and 4% is our return on investment. So it's our unhedged foreign currency exposure was okay if the spot currency exchange rate was stable. However, we looked at the scenario where the British pound sterling depreciates from $1.60 to say 1.4 US dollars per pound sterling. What was the impact of this depreciation of the foreign currency? Well, specifically the 50, we remember we're, we're funded with 200 million, half of it is invested abroad in the British pound sterling. That would, that earns 15%. However, it's offset or reduced by foreign currency depreciation in this case. So instead of getting back 115 million US dollars, we get back only 104 million US dollars after the impact of the foreign currency depreciation. And we saw that that reduced our RO, our return on assets below the cost of funds such that the return on investment was negative. And it could have worked both ways. The foreign currency could appreciate versus the dollar and we and the bank would benefit. But it's a substantial risk factor as unhedged. So what can the bank do? Well, the first method is the bank can conduct on balance sheet foreign currency hedging. What does that look like? Well, if I move down here and just show you a little bit more of the liabilities side of the balance sheet, we'll see that instead of funding these investments, entirely with US dollars, the bank can essentially match the liabilities with the assets in terms of the foreign currency exposure. So instead of 200 million in US dollars, the bank will fund with 100 million in US dollars and the other 100 million in interest-bearing liabilities that are denominated in British pound sterlings. 
in this way it's on balance sheet hedging because the investments are matched with the liabilities and in this case we have a 100 million in British pound sterling denominated assets matched with funded liabilities in the same foreign currency and now what can happen is if we looked at that previously bad scenario where the British pound sterling depreciates to 145 the asset side of the equation stays the same on those invested loans their the returns are still diluted from 15 percent all the way down to 4.2 percent due to the foreign currency depreciation but what happens with on balance sheet hedging I'll move this down just a little bit more is that the liabilities are similarly impacted so there's a natural on balance sheet hedge here these 100 million that are funded in British pound denominated liabilities note look notice how that they're they go from 100 million to only 1.100.59 US million they barely budge their cost of funds which previously would have been 11 percent is reduced all the way down to almost zero what happened here well the same thing that happened in the assets the foreign currency depreciation offset the liabilities as well and so it's a natural hedge built in and so all of the bank has a reduced return on asset it also has a reduced cost of funds such that in this case the return on investment is 2.31 percent you'll notice it's not exactly the four percent that we would have had under the unhedged stable currency scenario but it's still positive so the uh, hedge isn't perfect but it's it's almost perfect and the hedge and the hedges most hedges do works both ways if that uh, British pound sterling had appreciated instead against the US dollar you know now we have a phenomenal return on this in this foreign investment 25 percent remember that's really a double uh, we're getting double benefit there 15 percent on the foreign rate plus the benefit of the foreign currency appreciation um, however if we look down at the liabilities are 11 percent cost of funds on the matched liability also costs the bank more due to the foreign currency appreciation fully 21 percent how so again the hedge is working in the positive direction as well such that our return on investment not exactly the same as either the other two scenarios but still positive so this is on balance sheet hedging again namely the fact that the asset is invested in a foreign currency or has foreign currency exposure and it is matched with a liability that is also denominated in the same foreign currency this is David Harper the Bonnock Turtle thanks for your time <laughs>